Anybody that is pursuing sports specifically or anything in life, make the decision to get serious about it. And what I mean by that is, even at a young age, you have to understand sacrifice. Tell your friends, I can't be on Snap tonight. I can't hop on the Xbox and, and play Call of Duty all night with you or 2K all night with you. I can't go to the movies this weekend with you. I need to go work on my craft. So you're gonna have to be disciplined enough and you're gonna have to wanna set yourself apart enough to sacrifice those weekends with your friends and those late nights, staying up late on your phone. You're gonna have to do the right things the majority of the time. My name is Alexis Hornbuckle. I'm a certified personal trainer, player skill development coach, and a serial entrepreneur. Grew up in Dunbar, West Virginia. Started playing organized sports when I was four years old. Started out playing both soccer and basketball. Didn't even really like basketball. Around eight or nine years old, I think it is. I just remember like, oh, I'm actually pretty decent at that. You know, once I got past how terrible I was, those phases, I remember my dad saying, do you want to play or you want to play? And so when he asked that, it was, do you just want to play to have fun or do you want to try to dominate this game? No, I want to play. I want to dominate. I want to learn the game. I want to own the game. I want to make sure that I'm disruptive to anybody who's guarding me and anybody who was guarded by me. Other people probably started to realize that I was fairly talented and could do something with this game. Around nine, I remember going down to YBOA Nationals and we won. And we were the first team from West Virginia to do so. And being in Sports Illustrated faces in the crowd right after that, it was kind of like, oh, this kid might do something. We keep her out of trouble, she's gonna be all right. <laughs> Lady Vols first started for me sixth grade. I remember watching a documentary on HBO, The Cinderella Season. I believe we lost 10 games, and I say we because obviously LVFL now. And the practice that Pat had put them through was hellacious, to say the least. I mean, it was intense, throwing up. I mean, here's the hit these four corners of the trash can. We're going to run. We're going to work. This is what's going to happen. To see how she interacted with the kids, the discipline that was instilled in the players, the intensity of her stare. I mean, the way that she was just, the, and the players were like shoulders back, yes ma'am, all of it. You know, they just ate it up, they loved it. And it just reminded me of myself and being coached by my dad and my uncles that were always on my head about do this and do this the right way. And that's exactly who Pat is and was. And my eyes lit up. And I remember telling my dad, I wanna go there, that lady's crazy. That's where I wanna go, that's what I need. That's who I wanna play for. And, and she wins. Yeah, I think Alexis is, uh, I mean, she's having the best year of her career, and, and um, she, uh, she's been very efficient. I, I hated when she turned the ball over because I knew that you know, she's so hard on herself, but she did so many good things, and, um, you know, she's, <coughs> her shot selection is much better, her leadership is solid, you know, obviously her effort is there game in and game out, and she, she's not a player that likes to take any possessions off. What were they doing to Remembering that quote that she said post game about me as a player and never taking a possession off, it was an honor because in practice, that's not exactly what I heard. So, <laughs> you know, you can go faster, you can go harder. Why didn't you dive on that ball? Why, you know, so to me, I never did enough. And whenever, you know, that quote was said, it was almost like, okay, coach, you do see me. You do see my effort. You know what? I'm going to go 10 times harder for you now. I mean, I was already going 110 every time I'm on the court, but now I'm gonna try to give you 120. My time in Knoxville prepared me like for the level of the WNBA and overseas professionally, because I knew that no matter what, I had to place expectations on myself that matched the caliber of my coaches and the program that I was at and my teammates at Tennessee. So coming into the WNBA and playing for Bill Lambeer and a Rick Mahorn who thrive on defense and tough play, Man, thank you, Jesus, because I'm ready. I've been, <laughs> I've been training for this my whole life. So Knoxville, they just leveled me up. They continued to level me up. Pat continued to level me up. My teammates, my other coaches continued to level me up to where I became such a tough mental player that I honestly believe that there's no way you can beat me. I myself definitely had moments where I'm supposed to be celebrating a victory and it just doesn't feel as happy or as great. The elation's just not there, you know? We'll talk about 2008. So that was a really tough year for me. We go to Stanford, we lose in overtime. My grandmother passed away that day. Coach chose not to tell me until after the game. 
Then we go fast forward to, to Texas A&M. Almost didn't make it, right? Got blessed up, we made it. Final four, almost didn't make it to a championship. We win, awesome, great, another championship. I didn't feel like championship how I felt in 07, right? Fast forward 2008 WNBA championship. We won, I knew it, yeah, but it didn't feel like a championship to me. At that time, I had no clue why. As an adult, I get with the therapist, I get to talking, and it's really, I didn't feel like I did enough individually, so I couldn't accept collectively the reward. And that's mental health. That was the state of depression I was in. You should always be able to ask for help. If I'm injured, I have no problem going to a trainer and asking for help. If I'm fell in a class, I have no problem going to the tutor and asking for help. And for me personally, someone who did struggle with anxiety and depression, uh, and to go through therapy and treatments, and to finally be in a place where I can talk about it, is amazing. But guess what, that did not happen until I was retired, right? I did not even know about those resources until I was retired. Life after sports is, it was tough. It was tough, and it is tough for many athletes, men and women. You feel like, what's my value, what's my worth? And it doesn't happen to everybody, but it happens a lot more than what you think, especially if you never see yourself retiring, you know? We all know we grow old, but even as a kid, I'm playing till I'm 40, 50, 60, you know, till I can't walk anymore, and that's just not realistic, right? So when that time comes, if you don't already have a plan in action, that's tough. I wish that I would have known how to better transition as an athlete, but I didn't think I wanted to train, didn't think I wanted to coach for a little bit, didn't think, you know, I wanted to do a podcast. I didn't even think about those things. And so it was a lot of sitting around, like figuring out, and almost like, you know you should be doing something. You're, you're supposed to be great at something right now, right? So now it comes that pressure of, I was great here and I'm doing nothing here. I'm in limbo. So now I'm looking at myself as, am I really, was I really not that mentally tough? Was I really not prepared for life the way I thought I was? And all these questions arise, and none of that is probably true. It's just a simple fact that you weren't taught how to transition. It's okay that you're not a basketball player and act actively right now, or a football, or hockey, or whatever sport it is. That's okay, but guess what? You still are you, God still blessed you with a gift. You gotta go out there and get it. When it's all said and done, I want people to still say the same thing. The perseverance, the drive that she has, the passion that she has, the love for what she does is contagious. And if that can become a part of who I am from the looks of everybody else, I'm happy. But guess what? If it doesn't, I still know who I am, so I'm good. <laughs>